Good morning, Mark. How's it going? Good, mate. Good. Yeah, uh, lovely to see you. Yeah, and you, mate. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Yeah, I think the last time I saw you, um, I think you depped for uh, a band Freeze, I think, on the back of a back of a lorry in Ashton Gate Stadium, I think. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think. Was that pre-pandemic? Or... I, I think it might have been, mate. Yeah, I think it might have been. It was a good few years ago. But, um, yeah, time goes yeah. so fast, mate. It really does, but yeah. Mark, if anyone's watching uh, and they're not, you know, not come across you before and not know what you do, do you mind just explaining like what you do for your, you know, full time? I know what you do, obviously, but people may not know. Yeah, so um, I'm a musician and teacher, so I play bass and guitar, and I sing as well. Yes, yeah, which one to one, um, guitar and bass. Cool. So, yeah. Let's let's talk about that. I mean, because I I know that you're sort of a multi instrumentalist because you play bass, you play guitar. And you sing as well, so um, which is which is really handy, and I'm sure that massively helps when you're trying to get like gigs and things like that. Um, yeah, you, you can you can be a man of many talents and go to different things for different projects for different um, you know what's ever required from you, I suppose. Um, how is gigging for you at the moment? How has that been? Has it been busy or is it sort of quieting down a little bit? Or has it been... yeah, so as you know, it's always busy like in the warmer seasons. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the weekend just gone. I've just done six um wow yeah. so yeah and then um because it's been the carnation weekend so mm -hmm. yeah the thursday friday to saturday sunday and then yesterday as well so it's been busy um this weekend but yeah as you know it goes up and down self-employment in general just yeah yeah so um i do gig a lot though yeah it's my main thing so um i was gonna say is that your yeah. main sort of source of income with that yeah yeah, I, I mean, I've been teaching for probably mm, between eight and 12 years now. Yeah. But um, with COVID, I lost a few people, mm -hmm. gained a few people. And then, yeah, as you know, it was, sort of went online and things like that. And yeah, I tend to not do as much teaching. I, I love gigging. That's always been my yep. my thing. So, um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's yeah. good, mate. I mean, thing is, like, I think everybody, like, everyone I speak to on these on these podcasts, they all have some sort of like their main source of income. Like, there's always that main source, and mine is like teaching and coaching and things like that. But obviously, yours is the gigging. Um, yeah. Everyone has that sort of main source, and then there's those stems that come off those sort of other things that they do to, you know, keep things coming in, money coming in, and things like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's interesting that your main income is the um, performing, and then obviously the teaching as well. By the sounds of it, it's like a little stem off of that, and I'm sure there's other yeah. things that you do as well, maybe for um, other stems. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the gigging is, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's sort of fifty-fifty bass and guitar. Mm -hmm. Teaching, I've done, I've done like the school stuff, like the bit, the bigger groups with kids. Yes. Um, it's not really my thing. And I've always liked doing the one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I do that. Um, go to normally go to people's houses actually to do that. Okay. Um, so don't come to me I go to them um and just do one-to-one -one stuff mainly adults really um yes. yeah just just enjoy it more I think when you know when adults have lessons there they're paying for it they they do put the time in and um you see an improvement like a lot quicker and yeah just say like, they get it yes. more I find like they um yeah so when yeah. you teach it's like sometimes as young as you know six or something like that it is it is young i started when i was 11 playing guitar yes so I mean, um i was gonna ask you about that how you got into that i'll keep that for a little bit later but yeah that is um you're right mate like it is i don't teach like i don't teach six and seven and year olds anymore i've i've stopped doing that um i think the youngest i teach now is probably around about nine or ten um and yeah it depends because I don't mind teaching a young student is providing that they're, you know, you can tell that interest is there and they're like, they're interested in the guitar. I'm not a massive fan of it. As you said, like if you're there, you feel like maybe their parents are pushing them into it a little bit and they don't really want to do it. They're not interested in the lessons and not really interested in what you're telling them. Um, you know, then I'm not, I'm not too keen. Like I'm, a, I'm only want to work with sort of students that want my help really, I suppose. And, you know, want yeah. to, uh, want to listen, but I'm sure you've experienced that by teaching in schools because that, that put me right off. <laughs> yeah, it, it did me as well. And I think it is a bit like, without being rude, it's a it's like glorified babysitting when they're yes. quite young. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's why I like the one-to-one -one stuff because 
it's really hard as well. They're young and, you know, even a half an hour, they're, um, you know, they're losing concentration within yeah. that half an hour. So I always like, you know, obviously with adults, I do uh, hour lessons, but um, yeah, it can be hard work. It's like being a sort of a school teacher, I guess, yeah. really. Yeah, it is. Uh, I definitely agree I, with you. My uh, time of that, but um, yeah, just each their own. I know a lot of people that really like teaching young kids and that sort of thing, but um, yes. But yeah, yeah, just um, you can get on with more and get stuff done, and um, yeah, with with adults and they're paying for it, they want to they want to achieve something, you know, they want to play, and sometimes with the kids, they're just there because the parents have. Mm-hmm. you know it might be something good and they've just not don't take to it or well. yeah, yeah. No, you're, you're right i think adults just like have more of a you know when you're an adult you have more of a direction of where you want to go with it and, and why you want the lessons and you know you know really most people come through the store that are an adult and says right rich i'm into this i want to do this i can't do this yeah. at the moment but i'd love to be able to do this they come with more information like and that that's massively helpful as a teacher isn't it to get that information yeah um, quite- I was saying to a um, drummer friend of mine the other day, it's almost sometimes, even like on a recording session or if on a gig or on a song or anything, sometimes it's easier if people come to you and say, I want you to do this. Yes. Because then they're saying, you know, what, well, you know, in, in your circumstance, like, can you teach me this? Or if it's, uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's easier if someone gives you the information that they want you to do and you go, okay, I'll do that. Yes. Um, sometimes if you're like forced to think of something up to do like yeah. a, a solo let's say yeah you think oh, okay um <laughs> i could do lots of things uh yeah yeah you That's... know what you're thinking you want me to do sort of thing um yeah, it's, yeah. I, I always prefer it's, you're, you're right and i always prefer like when i've done sessions in the past i've always preferred when they've given me like a brief beforehand they're like right i want to sound a little bit like this this sort of style um you know this is what we're after and i'm like that's brilliant because that gives me like i know what gear i need to take i know what tone i'm trying to achieve fantastic and sometimes they do go um do your bit on the end there because that's cool we might use it we might not that's cool um and then you know nine times out of ten they may not use it but you still yeah. did your you know you thought you know i thought about be creative with this here and i can do that but yeah i'd, I'd much rather have somebody tell me like what they what they're after and what they're trying to achieve but I'm yeah sure i'm sure you're the same but um so how many gigs mate like on a regular sort of week for you what obviously with your, your teach um your full-time gigging how many gigs do you think is six a lot for you or is that normal um what's your sort of normal rate for gigs um yeah six is a lot um normally on a, on a normal week definitely two or three yes and then i teach weekly as well um yeah so yeah um yeah I, let's say that two or three i mean when we came out the back of uh the lockdowns the covid thing mm-hmm. um it was the whole backlog obviously of people getting married in those years where they didn't happen yes. so there was lots of you know lots and lots of weddings just backed up so mm-hmm. i was then doing literally six a week for a year so it was full on um, but, up, isn't it? but now i find that we're back to sort of pre-pandemic times mm-hmm. yeah it's i think the backlog's gone all the bands have covered the gigs um and we're back to how it was sadly because yes. i did love like being flat out yeah. with the gigs um yeah it's just what i like doing and when you when you i was saying to someone yesterday when you were doing that so much you feel like oh yeah this is like my job at the maximum you know this is me yeah. you can imagine like what bands are doing on tour yeah night after yeah. night after night um and it's nice you know it's like what we do it for i guess isn't it it's when it's like that it's like yeah it's happening sort of thing like yeah. well and the money's good and yeah yeah no i agree like if uh, yeah lots six, of weddings six. and functions and yeah six a week is 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 a lot and that's that's a really good rate to do um you know but yeah i, I agree i think it has it has quite in down and we said this to the band we had a chat the other day and it's it's returned back to you know before covid really like in terms of the level of gigs and things it's it's just returned back to normal i feel like now there's no sort of like boost in gigs or crazy amount of gigs playing catch up and things like that it's just back to back to normal gigs so um yeah yeah do you travel all over the place bark or do you stay within an area or your gigs? yeah i have done i mean traveled like 
you know, all over England mainly. I've never done anything abroad, actually. The only thing I've done is the um, Isles of Scilly. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I did that once, but um, I've never actually done anything abroad ever. Um, something I would like to do. Yeah. There was an opportunity once for me to start doing the cruise ship stuff. Mm-hmm. So then an audition for that and it fell through. So that never ever happened. But um yeah, I didn't ever end up doing that, which would have been quite nice, something different. Um yeah. but yeah, mainly it's just <clears throat> all around England really, just up and down the M4 and the M5 and you know, um yeah, just I suppose you could call them local gigs, but you know, within sort of five hours radius really. But yeah, I do a lot of, like I said, weddings and functions for agencies and with my trio and um, yeah, just I dep a lot with other bands. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Just... How do you find that, mate? Like, because I find it tiring, like going, like, I'm, I don't tend to, but this is the, the switch. My, my thing, full-time thing is the teaching and the coaching and yours is the, the full-time stuff. So you, you go and just, that's your, you think that's your main thing. So you go for it. But I find it really difficult, like if it's five hours or something or travel or four hours or three hours traveling back at midnight after a gig, you pack down by the time you pack down, maybe it's half past 12, uh, one o'clock maybe, and then you hit the road or whatever. I find it really difficult. I just, I get really tired on the way back driving. Um, so I tend not to do it. And maybe, uh, maybe I'm, I don't know, I, I tend to ask if that's the case, that if I'm doing a gig like that, that I get some sort of accommodation that may be a bit sort of, uh, bit posh but i just prefer to, to stay over than risk having an accident potentially on the way back home how do you find it do you get tired or do you you, you get used to it i suppose or yeah I, I get what you're saying there's been some that i've done and we have stayed over just because yes. it's, it's a lot of driving then plus the gig so mm. it's like yeah uh, i remember doing one uh, last year and we went to yorkshire and we got stuck in a uh, traffic jam on the way it took us five hours to get there we didn't actually stay. I was going with someone else, so I didn't have the option to be like, "We not come back," because he wanted to come back. Uh, no. so we had to do the drive on the way back, but that wasn't me, luckily, doing the drive. But he was okay with doing that, and I said, "You sure? There's money, you know. There is money to stay mm. if you want." And he was like, "Nah, I'd rather get back because then it eats into the next day." Yes. But yeah, I drive to a lot of gigs on my own, and yeah, I've I'm starting to find these days that sort of anything over three hours. Hmm. drags so like driving to Cornwall a lot Cornwall's like quite a vast area people think it was Devon you get to Devon like the M5 the end of the M5 and you've got Devon yeah and then like Cornwall can easily be another hour and a half like on the end of that as well to get to easily somewhere like Penzance or somewhere so anyway yeah when you start after three hours and start feeling the drag like oh this is yeah so I'm sort of these days not that I'm old but just um thinking that I am trying to sort of cut to two and a half hours max mm-hmm. on gigs um, where I'm cutting my nose off there for not getting more yeah. gigs. I don't know, but you do start to feel it. Unless you can stay over, like you say, then it's it's okay. But the money does need to add up, you know. Does, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's the thing. And, like, I get that other bands will probably, they will do that, you know, and, and they do. And that's why sometimes we lose out on work because that's what I'm after and other bands will say no we'll, we'll do it and we'll travel back that's fine uh, i just know i can't do it because i have done it and i've tried it and i just get extremely tired driving back and it's just like i'm driving back going like oh uh, open the window quick put some music on um i just yeah. can't do it it's, it's not worth the risk for me to do that i just get extremely tired yeah. so um yeah i just yeah. i just don't don't do that so much we tend to stick within the i don't know maximum hour and a half two hour radius i think really um, yeah we don't go we don't go crazy too far um, unless they said there's some sort of accommodation. We got a gig later in the year that's coming up, but we're staying down there, um, and that's all. That's all included. I suppose the toss-up is what you're saying before. It's like you can you can leave on the evening and get on the road and get going back, and then it doesn't eat into the day to m- the next day. But then you probably spend half the day in bed because you're knackered, or you get a good night's sleep, get to bed a bit earlier, get up in the morning, feel a bit fresher, I suppose, and then hit the road and get back. I don't know. That's the. I think I prefer the second one. I stay over, get a bit of sleep, and then get up in the morning and go right. Let's go. Um, and, right. yeah like for example on that Yorkshire gig I think the guy who I went with I think he had stuff on the next day and he's oh, there you go, yeah. so um, mm-hmm. yeah but I know what you mean though it is it is nice to stay over it's sort of a bit like a social as well if you're going with the band and you're all staying you know yeah. it's it's you know it's nice to hang isn't it with your yeah. friends and stuff but 
Yeah, it is an odd one. And the money's got to be right, I think. Because like you say, if it eats into the next day and you do spend a lot of like time in bed, just knackered. And yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess it's got to weigh it up, haven't you, really? And the money's got to be, I think, right to, to do that. And mm. Yeah, if you be doing all that for sort of hundred pounds, it's not worth it, is it? So No. In in your experience though, Mark, over the years of like you've seen all the changes like I have with bands and things. Do you feel like it's changed in terms of like bands now that are duos and acoustic sort of things are more popular and like one man uh, by himself with a backing track or trios, like you were saying, is more popular now than the big, big bands, or do you feel like it's still the same or in your opinion? Mm, I don't really know, to be honest. I mean yeah i mean obviously there's still a bit of everything isn't there really out there and i'm bristol alone where we are i mean there's um you know agencies that are pushing the solo and duo stuff and the bands and yeah it's like that around the clubs and the, the pubs and but i definitely think that there's there's a lot more people doing gigging and music in general from when i first started i'd say in bristol just yeah knowing that side of things you know what i mean yeah no, uh, I, I agree with that there's definitely way more bands way more musicians like on the circuit which is great um but there's definitely yeah. more like competition for the work now there's definitely there's oh more yeah more. yeah yeah definitely um i mean you've got bim in bristol which a lot of people come out of there and either go one of those ways you know go solo or they end up in a band or uh, something that stemmed from uni or college or whatever and then you've got yeah people that just I don't know everyone's trying to if they've come out of uh, a uni or a college they're trying to get into some sort of music job aren't they so yes. if gigging is an easy option through getting gigs for an agent or then I guess sort of why not I, I mean yeah it's, like it's a funny one like my, my friend one of the drummers um, in my trio going off subject a bit remember when he finished his law degree and it's so satur saturated like with people trying to get a degree in law and he was saying only two people like on his whole course in uni ended up doing something that was related to law everyone was just working in the subway and things like that so it's yeah. like it is a hard um industry same as the music industry to get a job doing something with music and i think if you can play gigging is a uh, easy thing to get into into that sort of yeah doing something you know um yeah 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 i mean i will i do remember from going to bim like if i look at the people that were in the class when i was at bim back then in 2000 and i think it's there on my certificate 2011 is correct i think it says that on there um but when i went to bim if i look at the class now and think who was in the class and who's now doing music i can count on one hand the people that are still doing music and the rest of them are no longer right. doing it yeah it's a funny thing, isn't it? It's like one of those things that we chatted about earlier. It's that um, when I started playing guitar at 11, I really wanted to learn, and I'm still here doing it now, but a lot of people start it, and it'll either be the thing, oh, this is quite hard. Like when you start shooting bar chords, now like, <laughs> don't do about that sort of thing. But um, some people hang on to it. Some people just don't, do they? So mm -hmm. there's how many people, I mean, you hear all the time that they do spend, like, thousands doing a degree they actually don't do anything related to it no. which is really sad but then it's it might not be that they don't not want to they don't want to do something it's just that the industry is quite hard yes um to get a job in it so they sort of think well i've got to do something maybe i'll come back to it sort of thing um yeah all different circumstances i guess isn't it really yeah do you know how much it is do you know how much it is now to attend bim i think one of my students is trying to get in there at the moment i think it's something like eleven twelve thousand pounds um, really per a year <laughs> oh right okay yeah. so i've never been to uni i didn't go to uni so i i do sort of know that well i remember someone saying it was about nine thousand but that must be like a while ago yeah inflation <laughs> oh yeah, yeah it's it's uh, yeah it's around about that sort of thing i'm not i haven't got the exact thing on the line but my student i know is going through the process at the moment and i just said to him like you know just make sure that's 100 percent right for you i know you want to get into music in that and don't feel like you won't get into music if you don't go to bim because i think it's sort of put there it's like top of the tree like you got to do this if you want to get into the industry but i just you know i, I get, had a good chat with him but um yeah he's looking to join bim but i know it's like a lot of money um and i know you get a student loan and things like that but potentially you're gonna have to pay that off at some point anyway so you know. yeah 
yeah it's it's a hard one i guess also you going into it being really passionate about it thinking yeah. you know i want to do it and then coming out and thinking yeah um there's not too many jobs in this industry or it's just really hard to get into just anything um yeah yeah i guess it's it, apparently it's like the second biggest industry in the world isn't it the music industry something like that you may be right mate. yeah it would yeah. Yeah. You be right. or something. yeah yeah it yeah is a, it is a hard industry i mean i don't think it's i don't know i said to someone else someone was talking about this the other day on the, one of these podcasts and saying that compared to like a nurse's job and things doctors and that it's not a hard industry at all but it's uh yeah. it's a hard industry to be um it's competitive massively competitive isn't it like there's always somebody else if you say no to a job and there's always somebody else who jumps in on that um yeah. you know and jobs don't stay around for long either if someone posts something up and you know it's like it's like ants. We all come in like to, to grab the work, like, and it goes very quickly, doesn't it? Like you must see those posts every day on groups and things. And as soon as something gets dropped, like literally everybody's over it, and you know, and that, that goes so quickly. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Those Facebook forums, they're great, and I have picked up quite a bit of work from them. Yeah, uh, I know what you mean. If something good comes up, there's yeah. like four or five hundred bands on there, like literally just tagging all their promos and. The thing is, I guess it just comes down to like you got to be in it to win it, sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. If you don't, then yeah. you might not get a chance. Of course, you know? I'm sure. Like I'm sure you you post and, and that, and I do as well. Like you see the gig come up, and like that'd be an awesome gig. That's cool. Yeah, put the put your details, social details, and stuff on there, and um, you know, some of them come off, some of them don't. But yeah, I do often tread through that and go, oh, I wonder if I, well, that gig ever came off, and you look through the comments, you're like Jesus, five hundred comments. Uh, <laughs> probably the reason why I didn't get picked because I'm right down the bottom there. <laughs> So, yeah, it's crazy, but um, yeah. Um, and if anyone is watching, because there's a couple of people watching, if they've got any questions for Mark, feel, feel free to. Um, I have a habit of getting into deep into conversation with the guests, and then I forget to ask, to, like to check the questions and stuff. So, and that's the bonus of doing live, so people can ask questions. So I'll get better at that. So if anyone got any questions for Mark, they want to ask, um, and please fire away, and I will uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, but Mark, let's go back, mate, with you, if that's okay. Um, how did you get into into music? Did you know from a young age that music was going to be your thing, or did you um did you discover that later in life so um yeah always been into music um and um yeah my some of my uh family were jazz musicians on my mum's side okay uh like back in yeah uh one one forties fifties whatever and I've always, yeah, I've always liked music, and um, I was massively into Michael Jackson when I was younger. Yeah. So I was, I was a big fan of Michael Jackson, still am, really. I mean, uh, yeah, just um, got hooked on it, really. A lot of kids in school liked him. I didn't at, at a point, and then I and then I did. Uh, my brother had a single of his, and I sort of listened to like Billie Jean and stuff like that, and yeah. just really got into it. My my dad was. I, big into listening you know to music not a musician but just music was always being played when we were younger and stuff and he sort of um sort of got me into it i guess um he was like into a lot of like 50s music mm -hmm. and so um and yeah so i sort of got into that really and um he was like oh why don't you you know try the guitar so i sort of did and then just um had lessons when i was 11 got like my first acoustic guitar and stuff and I had some lessons for about two years um, with a guy who came to uh, my house and um, yeah and just started having lessons and enjoyed it really yeah. got into it and um, yeah and that's that was that really uh, what, about, what about the singing side of it though Mark did you get did you have singing lessons or did you find out from a, that you, you could sing or how did you get into that so, yeah, so I was having lessons for a few years and then I sort of thought, I knew all the basics sort of thing and thought I can learn a lot myself. Mm -hmm. um, so then sort of from there, I've not had like any lessons since, just sort of self-taught along the way. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, also I was 11 when I started. So yeah, so I was um, playing literally in bands when I was in school year 11 I was out gigging like I am now on the weekends um when I was about 15 16 but um so when I was in my first band no one else sang so I sort of like had a go and did it 
and since then it's been sort of second nature i've yeah. done it since in the bands i've been in so just i guess hopefully i've got better in time at yeah. doing it yeah. so like now i'm in a trio and it's all covers stuff um so i'm you know the lead singer in that but it's just i've been in bands where no one else has sang and that that first band i was in um that was a trio as well and so yeah my dad was into sort of like rock and roll music and stuff like that so you know chuck berry elvis that sort of stuff yeah so sort of got he was trying to get me into that when i started so i was listening to a lot of that so and for young kids you know it's a bit weird being into that music so at school got bullied quite a bit for you? like you know different music and yeah mm -hmm. and, um, just kids didn't get it really and there was like we were saying earlier not a lot of people when i was at school were really into music and in my gcse class there was literally eight of us mm -hmm. and literally like two of us even sort of wanted to do it seriously yes so, and now you know like things with i guess things on telly even you know like and there's like stuff like britain's got talent and pop idol and all that sort of stuff and that there was like kids going on there playing instruments and stuff and I think for things like that, even with like young kids getting into guitars and music, mm -hmm. you, you do notice more in schools now that there's a lot more kids, you know, wanting to play guitar and be in bands. It's like the cool thing now. Never used to be no. when I was doing GCSE. I don't know about you, but yeah, it was just like, yeah, I got, I got bullied at school in senior school quite a bit. I hated school, really. I only really liked music. Yeah, um, yeah apart from that, I like, didn't like anyone at school, really. They were just... That's sad, mate. I, I'm like, I'm surprised at that because I, I was the same. My parents got me into that sort of music. I was into like Hank Marvin, like that was the guy with the glasses, like and yeah, you know, like, was, you yeah, know, massively yeah, into that, stuff massively as well. into that. And uh, my parents like got me into that and Buddy Holly and all that sort of stuff. And the same music you're yeah. talking about, like all the good stuff. But yeah. you like the good stuff when you're in school. I didn't, I don't think I get, I didn't get bullied um for uh, for the music that I was into. I don't think. I think people thought that was quite cool that I could play the guitar at the concerts oh, at the okay. end of the year, but. Obviously, I'm ginger. I got bullied for other reasons, like. Um, oh. Okay. But you know, it's just it is what it is. Kids are kids, aren't they? I get that, but yeah. I think that hardened me anyway. And to be honest, I, I wasn't. Um, I didn't get like it was extreme compared to some bullying nowadays. It's really nasty. Um, but it was just that you're the picking on thing, really, rather than bullied. You'd always get like you know all the comments about being ginger and things like that. So you get. Right. Like, but I, I just it's hardened me to be honest because it doesn't it doesn't bother me. Like really doesn't bother me anymore. Like it, if someone says anything to me, I don't really don't get embarrassed or anything. It doesn't bother me anymore. Um, yeah. as, as a kid, I think I just, it just hardened me to that. Um, you know, I just sort of didn't really didn't really bother me. But luckily, as I said, bullying nowadays is nasty, isn't it? Like it's horrible. Like some of the kids and things in school. So um, yeah, yeah. But not. I'm I'm sad to hear that you got you know picked on for your musical choice. That's not. Yeah. Well, again, it's just like kids don't get it, mate. I mean. As you know, a lot of young people, even still now, they're just listening to the chart stuff. So, you know, and, and I suppose it was a bit weird that, like, there was some kid who was, like, 15, 16 with, like, a quiff and a flat top yes. um, um, that was into, like, rockabilly and rock and roll sort of stuff. Okay. Was You know, it, it was, I suppose it was a bit odd for someone of my age, even though I've, like, met, ad, met um, you know, adults that have said, that's odd that you're into that sort of music. And it's like, well, it's what you're brought up on. Like, if, if you, when you're a kid and you in the car, you know, or at home, and your parents are playing music. It's yeah. normally like their taste, isn't it, or something like that. But um, so yeah, but I was yeah, I was very like tunnel visioned into that sort of stuff. So I started that first band. Um, that was what that was. It was like a rockabilly rock and roll band. It was a trio, and it was all sort of like you say, Buddy Holly, Gene Vincent, Eddie Cocker, and Elvis, all that sort of stuff. Um, and we were playing a lot of the jive clubs up and down, you know. Uh, England and stuff, and a lot of rock and roll clubs. And we ask you a question, Mark. It, it's something that I've been, I've talked about recently and laughing about. I remember earning fifty quid, sixty quid in a pub when I was nine, and I don't think it's changed since. Is it? Do you remember that? Like, <laughs> I, I say to people, I say like, if like inflation, it's all gone up, everything's gone up, but a pub price has never gone up. I was earning fifty, sixty quid. I remember, and maybe. When I was in school, that that was a, that's a lot of money for a nine-year-old to be earning, I suppose. But yeah. I was earning that sort of money when I was nine, um, gigging in like pubs and clubs and stuff. When they could let me in because they they said you're too young, basically. But they did let me in and gig, 
And um, yeah, I remember earning that sort of money back then and it's not changed, not in pubs anyway, it's still sort of 50, 60 quid a man. Um, is that yeah. same, do you remember that? Is that same for you? Yeah, totally, mate. I had the same stories. Um, so yeah, when I was gigging, when I was, yeah, like 15 in these places, yeah. I remember playing one place in Western and they had to change their insurance oh, wow. um, on the evening for their venue to let us in because we were so young yes. to play there. We were booked. They didn't realise how young we were. Mm. They had to change our insurance on the venue or something to let like under 16s in for this one night or something. It was really odd. Yes. I can't remember like, the fourth story, but yeah. And but yeah, I know what you're saying. I mean, depends on how many are in the band, really. But I mean, yes. Yeah, there are still venues you know, like that, they just don't budge and they haven't the last 20 years or, no. but um, yeah, I guess, you know, the functions and the weddings are sort of always where the money's been at, like, you know, good money yeah. um, in gigs, but yeah, no, totally the same story, mate, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just, well, I spoke about it the other day to, I think it was to the band and sort of spoke about it and laughed about it and I said, I remember earning that when I was nine, like in, <laughs> yeah, and my, my dad was quite sensible he said to me like you know, open a savings account put it away be sensible with it don't blow it give a bit to your sister all this sort of stuff <laughs> and i'm glad i did like um now like because you know it's taught me a lot but it's um yeah it was it just it makes me laugh because it's still the same money in pubs and things between yeah. if you split it between you like you know it's the same sort of same sort of money but yeah yeah but yeah um yeah it's just one of those things mate that's like times change don't they and you know it's it's funny i see I drive past like schools now and the kids are coming out and they've got a guitar on their back and I think, you know, I'm glad it's changed. I'm glad that, you know, in a way that it is cool yeah. and, you know, when people are doing it and it's become sort of in a way more like acceptable. Yeah. Um, I'm sure a lot of people that maybe watch this can maybe relate. Um, but yeah, it was just um, a bit weird that I remember like kids saying, oh, I saw you the other day playing your banjo and it's like, Nah, it's the guitar for one and yeah like, it's just like get life and i think you know still a lot of kids now hanging around on street corners they didn't know what they want to do yeah and all that sort of thing and it's like i was lucky i was quite fortunate to have that at a young age and have something even maybe if i didn't do it as full time to fall back on yes and have it as like you know an interest a hobby yeah, yeah. It can always be your de-stress as well. Like if you if you weren't going to do it full time like you do and make it your job, if you would have done another job somewhere else full time, you'd always have the guitar as a de-stress, wouldn't you? Like it'd always be something you'd come away from. Maybe gig a little bit on the weekends as well on a part time thing. If yeah. You'd gone and done a different route in you know instead of music, it's always a de-stress, and that's what I say to my students. I say it's like the best thing ever because you know you guys don't do this full time, but you've got this lovely little thing that you can do on the on a weekend when your jobs are so stressful. You can just come out on a weekend, pick your guitar up play for a few hours, de-stress, not think about things, and then go back to normal life. It's, it's a nice thing to do, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, totally, yeah. And I've heard that the same thing about people playing their PlayStation as well. Yeah, um, that, I know, I know. <laughs> turn up to a lesson. So have you, have you um, been playing much this weekend? <laughs> yeah. Um, I was on my PS2 or whatever it is, like yeah. PS3 or whatever, just playing whatever, Mario Kart or something. It's like, all right, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's... If looking back now, I think when I started when I was nine, like we had things like Sega Mega Drive and stuff. I'm sure you remember all that and like that yeah. stuff that came out. And there were still distractions, but I just remember, I think it just really lucky to have started at the right age because there was not so many distractions. If I'd have started now or even when I was you know, 18, 20 or whatever, there's far too many. I don't think I would have kept it up. It's just too many distractions, you know, that pull you away from the guitar. But when you're nine or, you know, when you said you were 11, weren't you, when you started? Yeah. Yeah, you just... um. I don't know, you just got lots of time, haven't you, to fill and you can focus on the guitar, you can practice, you can Yeah. You know. I've never really thought about that, about um what would it be like if I started now, but I, I, I know what you mean. I mean like I remember getting our first like PC. Yeah. Um when ninety ninety eight it was with dial ups, remember that? Yeah, yeah. Um, before all of that was obviously no internet, like house phone. I mean, no one's really got a house phone these days even. No mad that not a lot of people don't have like a landline um but yeah i don't know like there's there's a nice thing about that as well though i think you know going back to how it was and people say you know oh just a mad you know kids and you you say to kids about you know how it used to be like i mean we weren't living in like world war one obviously but no, no, no. Yeah, and it's like 
we didn't have internet yeah and you had you had a house phone and it's like yeah, yeah and it was you know you just go outside on your bike and bmx skateboard hang around with your friends in the park playing football yeah and there's there's something really nice about that and i'm glad that i sort of grew up in that time and had that experience because yeah. i mean now it's all ipads iphones i yes. did, and it's like that makes you sound really old probably but no, it doesn't i, I, know, I, know, you know, I know what you mean yeah. i think you were the same age as me and you probably did exactly the same yeah you know. I'm, I'm 33 mark how old are you just ask 34 yeah so it's a similar sort of age so we had a similar sort of i'd imagine experience sort of growing up in those sort of yeah it's just like and uh, you know I, I wouldn't ever take that back I really yeah. wouldn't because like you had such like fun times with your mates and yeah um yeah i mean like the days of like msn do you remember that messenger things yeah. like that yeah. you'd spend all day with those people at school and then you'd come over there and chat yeah. to them on msn <laughs> all night and it's just it's just pointless stupid stuff but i guess you know playing football and like bmx's and skateboards and stuff but yeah yeah it's it fun. Good, it's good times mate like it was really good and i remember with the internet i remember we were, like one of the first people because my dad used to work for like telly west which was like the internet company at the time like cable and things like that yeah and um and we used to have everything all the channels and it was like amazing to have all that at that age but he to have the internet i think we actually got unplug the phone if we wanted to plug the internet in so yeah it was on like one thing so if it's like right if you, if, right you got half an hour because if i unplug the phone no one can phone us for half an hour so not that anyone ever phoned us anyway i don't think but you know what i mean like it's that time plug the phone put the internet in and then you had that horrible squeeze screeching noise when you plug it in what it's going dialing up and yeah yeah, oh, yeah. early days of internet and now it's like non-existent but yeah, yeah. yeah it's crazy mate but um yeah <clears throat> so, uh do you have any plans mark for the future with your bands and things because it's, it's the b-side to the name of your band is it your trio yeah so i've been doing that for since 2010 that band so okay. so yeah i was doing the band before um when i was like 16 and i was doing that up till i was about 22 and with that band we did get signed to a label a small independent label in london okay um and it was like it was a label that specialized in sort of uh punk rock and roll rockabilly that sort of thing okay and um so we did a publishing contract and it was sort of it was all original stuff actually on the album and i wrote a couple of songs on that and the drummer um wrote quite a lot of the songs and he sang as well because i always used to sing in the band and then later on he started singing a bit and we sort of shared the vocals and stuff so I had a bit of experience in that when i was younger it was quite good yeah but it never sort of went anywhere i don't think it's on spotify and stuff and it got released as like you know on cd and that sort of thing at the time yes uh, it was just quite good to have an experience like the label sort of it was a bit of a gamble with us really um they just sort of said we really like you we like to do an album so we we did a few albums i like recorded them in the studios and sold them at our gigs you know previous to that as well like cover stuff but then we did this first album which is all like original stuff in that style and um i don't think it i never ever saw any royalties for any of it but um, i don't really think you know it took a gamble it was a small label and we were a small band so it was yeah. like it was just quite good to have a bit of an insight with that I went to recording yeah. studio and did it um where can people find that mark on spotify when you go and have a look then you know people uh, you don't, you don't <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah it's just um it's funny to think you know that was quite a long time ago but time goes to go so fast but um it does yeah yeah but um yeah, so I did that for a while and it got, it got a little bit boring. I mean, like the rock and roll stuff, like you were saying, like listen to Hank Marvin and stuff like that. And rock and roll stuff is it's great stuff. But when you're gigging it like week in, week out, and you're doing a lot of the like jive clubs and this sort of stuff, rock and roll clubs and yeah. that sort of thing, it's like you're playing the same old songs. A lot of it's like three, four chords. And yeah. just was like, it's a bit of a, one of those things you get into as easy money and that sort of thing. And I just felt I wanted to, one, progress as a musician. Yeah. mainly that was a big thing for me because i thought you know I'm, I'm doing this full time and i'm very like tunnel visioned into that sort of genre of music when i started having lessons in that yes uh, when i was 11 um the guy i was having lessons with he was sort of showing me a lot of other stuff you know just like uh, a lot of acoustic stuff we looked at like tab and chords and mm -hmm. just like strumming stuff and you know, all the basics and yeah just sort of array of songs really like but which wasn't what i was doing um 
in this band but yeah so when i left that band and did the b-sides yeah. that was great because it sort of opens um you know the horizons for you know other genres and you know styles and you know progressing as a musician really yes and it's the best thing i did personally i think yeah and um you know you learn more you learn stuff off other people play with other musicians and um yeah i progressed that's like my biggest progression i would say leading that doing that sort of rock and roll stuff and going into doing weddings and that it's like a you know better money playing different stuff playing with other musicians mm-hmm. um so yeah i went sort of from one genre a couple of genres like playing that for a long time and then going into stuff that was like you know pop rock funk reggae and all that sort of stuff which is great because it's good to have like a bit of that in your playing you know to be able to if someone says can you play this and you've never had much experience in it it's good to be able to play you know some of each genre yeah um as a go-to you know even if you're not great at, at it is something you know that you I'd, can, uh, I'd yeah. see that mark what you did back then is a massive positive yeah i i still look back now and and you know i don't play hank marvin stuff anymore but I could, and if someone says like, "Can you create that sort of like Hank sound or that Cliff Richardy sort of thing?" Yeah, I can. Yeah, I know how to do that because I spent a long time focusing on that. Yeah, but, like it's it's not a bad thing. Trust me, it's really not because I think it informs you as a player anyway, and it still creeps in a little bit. That's sort of what I learned back then into my sort of rock and blues playing. Now anyway, a lot of the stuff like double stop stuff or whatever things you're doing, I think it informs that massively. Um, and also, I think I got. I became a very melodic guitar player, I feel, from learning Hank Marvin from the beginning. Yeah. All of, all of the stuff was like melody playing, isn't it? It's all like um, melody lines and yeah. tunes and really cool little catchy tunes. I feel like I learned that's where it, that's where it came from. So I don't I don't ever look down at it and go, oh, God, I started at Hank Marvin. I, I think it's a really uh, good thing to do. So Yeah, no, I mean, uh, yeah. And although I've like moved on and do, doing like uh, the wedding stuff and all different you know playing all sorts of different stuff now i mean i still i haven't gone back to that stuff in a while there was one band i was in with down in torquay and it was a bit weird because i haven't played that stuff for years i was doing the function stuff and i was depping with those and i was thinking like god i haven't played this stuff for years but you still revisit like you say you yeah. still come back to that stuff and it's not now that's that's bad stuff i mean some of the you know some of the 50s guitar Mm. stuff is is great it really yeah. is legendary like, like chuck berry stuff or um i was massively into a band called the stray cats which was sort of neo rockabilly they were like 80s sort of more modern sort of rock and roll rockabilly yeah i don't know if you've heard of the stray cats brian I have Set- heard of the stray cats yeah yeah brian Setter was an absolutely killer player and i was being younger and being into like rock and roll stuff i I liked that stuff more, like the more modern approach on older music, yes. but still the old stuff like Chuck Berry and, you know, it, it all comes from blues, doesn't it, as well? So there's a lot of killer guitar stuff in that. And when you play, when I play, I still recognise that there's, you know, elements of that, like the blues and rock yeah. and roll. So I think it's a great foundation for a lot of musicians, to be totally honest. Yeah, I do. I think I don't think it's a bad thing, as I said. I think it's a very sort of informative way to for you to have started the guitar, and then now, obviously, I did the same as you. I I got to a point and I went right. I've done enough of that now. And then I found Guns and Roses and Slash, and I was like, all right, here we go. This is it. What is this? How is he making it distort like that? How is it sounding like that? And then it's like, right, I've gone down a rabbit hole now. But I left, I I've, I left that in the sort of in the past a little bit. The sort of Hank Marvin Shadow stuff, like I'm sure you did, um, and the rockabilly things. And but um, yeah. As I said, informs you as a musician, doesn't it? It still makes you a better player. I feel. Yeah, like, yeah. When when I left school, like I didn't didn't like school at all, really, and not a lot of the people there, to be honest. Um, yeah, when I when I finished school, I went to there and I went to college and did music, and it was the best two years of education that I've ever had. Where, where did you go, Mark, for music college? So um, I had an audition at um, ATM Access to Music. Yeah. Um, when I was still in year 11 and I didn't get in for some really? reason and then just two like two days before they were supposed to start that course someone dropped out and they rang me and said would you like a, you know would you like to come on the course someone's dropped out I thought 
No, not really. Like, I would have rather got yeah. in on my audition. Yeah. Don't know why I didn't, because you know, I played well, I thought. And um, yeah, just personally, I knew a lot of people were on that course in that year. And I was sort of like, why didn't I get in? Yeah. Um, but I guess these things happen. I don't know. But um, so anyway, I ended up going to um, the places there, but the course isn't. So um, it was in the West of all places. Okay. Um, in Bristol. And it was a place called The Park. Right. So it's a it's called the Park Centre. So they uh, it's a big place there. They have like a gym, and they have um, they run a lot of courses. They were doing all sorts of like things there, and they had a music course. And I uh, went for an audition and that, and um, I didn't do amazingly in my GCSEs. But the guy was like, you know, we're not really looking for you know really really good like marks and your GCSEs and that and they were like we can clearly see you've got passion for music and it's something that you really want to do yeah and um I went I did that I did a national diploma BTEC national diploma there for two years yeah and I had great tutors I met some great people on the course and it was the best two years of education I've ever had I loved it and I'd do it again you know in a heartbeat and you know good times going from school which I hated to that was like it was great and because it was something that I was into I did really well you know yeah. distinctions and merits and all sorts and yeah I just got really you know good grades in that it's actually something that I was you know good at you know it was what I wanted to do so in school I got to the point where I didn't really bother come the end got got um you know sort of like D's and uh grades like that but you know not like a stars and that sort of thing but i don't think it's the be all and end all they mate is it nowadays i don't think like you know it's obviously great to get your gcse's and stuff and i i did okay in my gcse's i wasn't like i was never like a top end student like getting a stars a's a's i was uh. always the guy i was always the guy who could do better like i was always the guy who would get c's or whatever and just cruise along and not really apply myself very much and then right. they'd be like well he's, he's doing okay but he could do better and i was always that guy um right. i i walked away with like i think one b one a which is obviously in music um and then the rest were like c's a d uh in maths um uses of maths and um yeah so i didn't i didn't do amazingly well i did okay like i got through them but i didn't do amazingly well and i don't think i don't know i don't think nowadays i don't think that's a be all end all i think it's, it's good it could help i suppose get you into what you want to do after after school yeah but but I feel like some people nowadays don't fit into this sort of like uh, this box of like how, you know, everybody they want you to be like this sort of thing. And some people just aren't on that at all. They're like over here. Yeah. <laughs> and they want you to be like this and you got to learn this, this and this and be good at maths and all this sort of stuff and English and this. And people are just over here thinking like uh, something completely different. Um, so yeah. I don't know what you feel on that, but that's that's my thoughts on it. But yeah, totally yeah. Saying, saying about the music thing, actually, yeah, the best grade I did get in, GCSE was music. I got Is a B, there you go. um, which I thought I might have done better on. But I don't know if you remember, but GCSE music was a bit odd because there was like lots of parts to it. But when you did the exams, it was a lot of questions about like really, really old music. Yeah, I know. I remember like stuff that was music. yeah, and what <laughs> they used in the eighteen hundreds, and it was a bit like whoa. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be this sort of stuff. And um, yeah, I always just remember thinking like we didn't do any of this like no. didn't really yeah like in the lessons i can't remember doing anything on that and then it came up in the in the exams i was thinking ryan okay <laughs> so i got b so that was good so yeah, you did uh, right, right. Yeah. I, yeah i i think i only i only got an a in music because i did the same as you with the exam the written exam and stuff i think it was just like i didn't have a clue like what instruments are they using that I, I, I don't know i don't know guitar no <laughs> um <laughs> and and uh, yeah, I did, I did, but I, f I probably felt that really miserably because of my performance thing was always quite high, the performance side of it, like having to learn songs to perform, you know, it was always like a high standard that pulled my grade up massively, I think. So I got really high marks on the performance side of things, but really low marks on the, I suppose, the theory bit and all the other bits. Um, but yeah, I think I only got an A because of that reason. But I wouldn't, I don't remember music GCSE being an enjoyable part of my life. I remember um, not, th I remember thinking, I don't want to do this. I just want to do like rock music or this and this. And it's like, no, you must learn about, um, you know, back in the 1800s and you must learn about this. And I was like, I don't really want to learn about this. I mean, it's nice to yeah. know. Like, it's good to know, I guess, but I wasn't really into that. And 
you know, exactly. people in the class were. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Exactly that. It's a bit like, um, oh, I was going to say, yeah, it's a bit like when I teach guitar, um, I always like to teach people stuff that they want to learn. Yeah. I find that's another big thing of one, keeping students. Yes. And two, keeping them interested in learning the instrument because when I had lessons, um, I didn't really mind. I didn't really know what I was into at the yeah. time. Yeah. And the guy that was teaching me, um, he just sort of had like CDs of a lot of like middle of the road stuff. I mean, there was all sorts of stuff on like status quo, Fleetwood Mac, like all sorts. It's a lot of, depending on what we were doing, there's a lot of like acoustic y like shum stuff. And then mm -hmm. we looked at the tab with like um, doing lead and things like that. And yeah, we just used to, he used to have like CDs and just used to have like chord sheets and um let's just play along to songs and yeah just getting a feel for like you know rhythm guitar yes. and looking at yeah tab and stuff like that but i didn't really mind i just wanted to play and just enjoyed playing the guitar really yeah but now when i teach people i think i could just go along with an array of stuff and just say right we're going to do this yeah and if it's a young person then you're playing like i don't know I can't think yeah. of so off, off the top you're, of my head. But like... you're, you're right. Like I feel the same. Like I do. I do the same with my, especially with my younger students. But because I think older students are a bit more open to what you're trying to suggest. You know, they need to know it for a certain reason because it make you a better guitar player, or whatever. Yeah. Um, they're yeah. more open to that. But um, yeah, with young children, you're 100 percent right. There's no point. In, you see them glaze over. Like if you give them something like really, you know, old, they don't like it. And I turn up to the lesson and go, here you go. This is the Hank Marvin song Apache. And they go, what's that? And then you play it to them. And they go, don't know it. Um, I like Ed Sheeran <laughs> and then you, you're better off just giving them something that they're going to recognize especially with the practice side of things because getting a young child to practice anyway you know how difficult that is as we were talking about yeah. earlier but to yeah. give them something they love they're like okay I might actually have a go at this because I quite like this song yeah you just exactly. see the reaction don't you their face lights up as opposed to like all right I'm lost me now I'm looking out the window <laughs> yeah so. I mean when I was having lessons yeah I think you know what would that have been 2003 yeah I mean it was just coming out the back of the 90s I guess which wasn't really much like guitar music in the charts probably like um so yeah I was just sort of I, I was new into guitar so I didn't really know what to expect I just was happy to learn this stuff and you know funny enough a lot of the stuff that I was doing in those lessons I have taught to other people yeah um when I've been teaching or I've it's come up in a gig and they're like, do you know this song? I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it all comes back around, doesn't it? Sometimes you end up playing a lot of those tunes, which has been helpful that you've yeah. learned those years ago. Um, so, yeah. Um, That's good. Yeah. good Mark. So before I let you go, Mark, so I've taken up your time. Um, do you have any plans for the future if, as a musician? Have you got sort of any goals you want to achieve? Or are you, you happy where you are at the moment? Or is there anything you want to do in the future that you've not done at the moment? Do you have um... Big question. Um, you don't. You don't have to, mate. Like not everybody has. Uh, but you know, you 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 do. You're very successful. What you do, you, you know, you might not. You might be absolutely cool with that. Um, but some people say, I want to do this. I want. You said about earlier, Mike. You said years ago you got offered to do cruise stuff. Is that still on the table? Do you feel for the future, or is there any other things you'd like to do? Yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, as a musician, you always want to, I guess, broaden your horizons, don't you, and do bigger things and that. But yeah, I feel that. I guess as us people along the way, we we do sort of in little ways, like, you know, get better gear or we do bigger gigs or we, you know, that's always a nice thing, playing big gigs that, um, yeah, playing bigger gigs and just, um, yeah, progressing, I guess. I don't really have many, I don't think, no. real big things that, um, I've, I've written some stuff in the past, but, I haven't done any of that in a long time. Maybe something that I might yeah. look into. And um, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, yeah, but I mean, you sort of said there that you said maybe like you said doing bigger gigs and you know upgrading gear. It's all it's all part of progression, isn't it? It's all part. It doesn't yeah. have to be. Nowadays, I feel like it's we're all about everyone's sort of pushy, pushy about goals and big goals and big aims and things like that. And um, and it's great. It's really good for some people that works really well. Some people it doesn't work very well at all. And I think, you know, like you're saying, like you're progressing forward because 
you're getting bigger gigs and maybe you get more gigs and your gear's improving. It's still all moving forward in the right direction, isn't it? So you don't necessarily need this big carrot dangled in the future somewhere that, you know, you're aiming for. I don't think not everybody that works for, does it? So Yeah, I mean, in the past, I mean, I have done some, you know, big gigs. I've done the Colson Hall. Um, I've done Glastonbury three times. Yeah. Um, first time I ever did that was when I was 16. Yeah. Um, that was about seven and a half thousand on one of the uh, left field stage it was. Okay. That was through college. It was a band that they sort of made through college and they had connections there. So I did that three I did that three times, not that same stage, but um, other stages as well with that same connection through college and that. And I've also done like um, the Queen did like a royal visit to mm. my college and we did like a private gig for her. Wow. Um, well, I was about 16, 17. So that was like sort of quite a big thing, I guess. So I've done some, I've done some, you know. Did she like stuff. you? Did the Queen? Oh, I did. I did meet her. Yeah, like oh. very briefly, like the old handshake and yeah. um, that sort of thing. And yeah, it was just she was doing like this visit to the college and seeing, you know, going around the, the place and looking at what people did and that sort of stuff. And yeah, we were, we um, we just put on like a little gig basically, and she watched with her security guards. And <laughs> yeah, it was it was quite good. And yeah, um, it was just yeah, uh, was what it was really. But yeah, I've done a lot of like festival gigs and as you know, tons of weddings and that sort of thing. So I've done my fair share of good stuff. But yeah. Been quite lucky to yeah, yeah. do what we do. Yeah. That's good, mate. Yeah. It's, really, it's really good. And I said, it's might have been a pleasure to talk to you, mate. I've never really had so much in common in terms of like age and also like growing up as well. It sounds very similar in yeah. terms of the story and the path and stuff and going off to college and things. It all seems very sort of similar timeline. So, um, but yeah, so it's been a pleasure talking to you, mate. Um, and if anyone does have any questions, which you might drop in the comments, um, I'm sure I'll tag you in it and you'll see it anyway. So, um, and these, these, uh, these, uh, episodes do go up onto YouTube as well. So, um, probably by the end of the week, it will be edited and it'll be up on YouTube. So you can share it if you'd like to as well. And, um, I'm sure people might comment on that as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, nice one. Yeah. Cheers. I've, wa I've watched all of the ones that you've done so far. Yeah. Um, with the guys that you've had on, they've all been really good. Like a lot of, a lot of the stuff that you know, there's a lot of guys that you've had on that I know that we both know. Yes, from the, from the gig and circuit, but um, a lot of it I can relate to. You know, a lot yeah. of it's really good. Like you've had some really good guests on. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's it's really nice, and I actually genuinely enjoy talking to other musicians about their job, what they do, and it's I just genuinely enjoy it, mate. That's why I do it. Um, you know, it's just in, enjoyable talking to other musicians and find out how they got into the music and uh, how they make their living and and things like that. I'm just interested in, in that. It just interests me. Um. So yeah, that's why I do it. And it's nice to also talk to other musicians like yourself. And you have same stories, don't you? You have similar stories and you have that connection. You're like, oh, I've done that. Or, you know, I have I recognize what you're saying there. That makes a lot of sense. Because to yeah. other people that, you know, have different jobs, not in the music industry, it's hard to relate, isn't it? Sometimes with their sort of, you know, nine to five schedule and things like that. And, you know, it's hard to relate. And you're talking about all these different things. That it, they don't know. And you, you, don't, you, you can't relate to some of their things either because they're in a different sort of realm to you in terms of their working life. So. But yeah, as I said, yeah. it's a pleasure to talk to you, Mark, um, and uh, you enjoy the rest of your day. And Cheers. hopefully catch you on the circuit soon, mate. Yeah, I'm sure I will. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me, Rich. That's all right. You're welcome. You take care, mate. Nice, mate. See you soon. Cheers, Mark. Bye, mate.